Hey everyone, my name is Ksenia and today my guest here, finally in person, is the Russian dynamite Masha Slamovich. It's so nice to finally meet you in person. Yes, finally we see each other physically and not on the screen. Right. You're real. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> I'm taller than I expected. <laughs> really? <laughs> People usually expect me to be quite tall, so... I'm bad with judging heights. <laughs> all the way from Japan, right? Right now. I did, yes. Wow, we're in Jacksonville right now, you guys. The cradle of AW and all, all things wrestling. And we're at the Bankfield Stadium right now, where, prior to the Mission Pro Wrestling event that Masha is going to be at. I'm just giving you some context. So, since we're here, since we're in this iconic place, I have to ask you, are you potentially interested in maybe pursuing signing with AW? It is, it is definitely something that I've had my mind on and I'm sure that future months as AW has been on the road will have a fruitful outcome and I am just putting positivity out into the universe and working hard and you know we'll see, we'll see what the future brings. Keep your eyes on the Russian Dynamite y'all. That sounds almost like you know something. <laughs> I'm not gonna push you about it. Uh, and also you've recently definitely noticed and I noticed everyone noticed that among some talent that's been appearing on Dark and then transition to Dynamite, there's been a bit of a theme of Russian women, because <laughs> we've seen Leila Hirsch, who is also Russian, we've seen Natalia Markova, who is literally all the way from Russia, I've seen her live in Russia, like, very recently, you probably saw her there too when you went to Russia. Oh, uh, well, she was already here when I went over there. Oh, okay. We just <laughs> missed each other. <laughs> we just, yeah. So, if you were to sign with AW, do you feel like you would keep the Russian Dynamite gimmick, because it's kind of situated with Russian women at this point. <laughs> I I would definitely keep Russian Dynamite because Russian Dynamite is it's me, you know. It's not a gimmick or whatever, you know. People people wonder where it comes from, and the inspiration is from the Dynamite Kid, and also the fact that oh, I am Russian. Okay. So <laughs> it is my greatest inspiration in wrestling and the heritage that I represent put together, and there's no reason that I need to change that. That makes a lot of sense, actually. And I mentioned briefly that you did perform in Russia a couple of years ago, right? I did, in 2019. At IWF Russia. And it's one thing for me, because I could say it's my like home promotion, because I kind of started doing the journalism things with them. But you had a whole different career path. You were big in Japan, you were big in America, and then you came to perform in Russia. So as a person from the outside perspective, how was it? Like, what's the wrestling like in Russia? How is it different? It's a lot similar, actually, because, of course, I attended training and uh, we did the tapings while I was there. I was very impressed and I was very happy to see that there was very good quality wrestlers in Russia. And, you know, for example, Casey from IWF yeah. and uh, Ivan Markov, they're two wrestlers that I would like to see get more exposure because they're talented, in my opinion. I think that Russia has very good quality wrestlers and they're just not in the public eye as much as they really should be. Right now we're at a festival, it's a taco festival, so it's not a purely wrestling event. And do you feel like having wrestling at events like that works, like it's good for outside audiences or is it just like weird for people? Because again, back in Russia I've noticed that like whenever we had wrestling at sports events or like comic cons and stuff like that, it doesn't really draw. But obviously Jacksonville is very different and America is very different on the whole. So do you feel like it's a good thing to expose wrestling to outside audiences like that? I think it's an excellent thing and I think that those are the audience that we should be targeting at this very moment. And at any moment because, you know, exposing to a different audience means that we're showing pro wrestling to people who potentially have never seen it before. And, you know, pro wrestling I think is the greatest sport, so why yes. not? spread the word of pro wrestling and build more fans of course we should target audiences that don't already know pro wrestling and i think taco festivals at a place that is the home of AEW is a perfect place to do that so the event that we're having today is an all women's event which in my opinion is great and wonderful and cool and i have to ask the one thing that i don't really like talking about but i guess we have to talk about it because apparently, especially with AEW, we've noticed that whenever wrestling gets more 
harsh or bloody or whatever. Apparently, female audiences don't really like that and they switch the channel, which I want to go like, oh, like that's bull that's not true because I'm not like that, but the statistics say otherwise. So, do you feel like women's audiences really need a different type of wrestling to watch? And like, what kind of wrestling should be at an all women's event? And is, is it in any way different? I do think that, of course, not all, but some women do not particularly like to watch violence. However, I, I don't quite think that means that we shouldn't have bloody or hardcore matches at women's wrestling events. I don't particularly have an answer to this, actually. Um, I just don't think that we should, um, you know, I don't think that that's something that is a, a massive issue that completely we need to reevaluate how we do women's shows over. I think that there's a small amount of people who may not like it, but there's plenty of women who don't mind it. So, what you know, if it was the men's, would we say the same thing? Would we say, oh, just no, because some men don't want to watch violence, we don't <laughs> give it to the rest of the men? I just think that that's kind of a strange question, I don't know. I mean, that's why I said that I don't really like to ask it, but it's just, you know, it has to be said at the point. <laughs> I guess it is something that has to be talked about. So, and part of the reason why I'm asking you is because your in ring style is, like, pretty hard hitting, and recently we've noticed also quite some women who used to do mainstream or classic wrestling transition to more violent styles, I guess you could say, uh, namely Heather Monroe is going to be at the show today, she's done some deathmatch stuff recently. So I'm gonna ask you, are you open to doing deathmatch wrestling? I would be open to the idea, of course. If anyone has watched recently in Camp Leapfrog, we had the Soviet deathmatch uh, with myself against Edith Surreal. And just a couple of weeks ago, I wrestled Kimberly in the, in the pit, in Pit Fighter X. So I think a deathmatch is just one <laughs> step away from that. Yeah, I would say so. And if you were to like decide right now, is there like, maybe like one weapon or like item that you would never agree to be used to you. Man, I'm probably gonna have to go with like gusset plates, but I'm saying this okay. now and not in a match when I can really be talked into just about anything, so. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's interesting. So you guys, we're gonna see Masha agree to anything. If, if a good opportunity arises, right? It is, anytime <laughs> I do something, it's always gonna get wild. I think everybody knows that by now. Expect the unexpected and <laughs> You know, Masha Slamovich is unpredictable. Yeah, and talking about expected and unexpected, is there something that you can give us like a teaser of? Like, is there something we should expect in the nearest future? Like an exciting match that you're about to be in, apart from the show, obviously, or like maybe like a merge release or something? Like, give us something to look forward to. I would say there is something to look forward to. I think a new audience is going to get to feast their eyes on the violence of Masha Slamovich. And that's all I've got for you now. It's going to be a new audience. And uh, if you go back and watch some of my interviews, I've already brought that audience up. So I don't know, go watch my past interviews with Senya and somebody else and go listen to everything I've said to try to figure this one out. That's an Easter egg for you. You need to like, put the puzzle together. <laughs> yeah. So and while you put the puzzle together, if you have anything to plug, your merch, your social media, you can do this right now. I do. I actually am going to be dropping two new photo shoots on Patreon within the next couple of weeks. And in August, for all of my new patrons, we're gonna have free merchandise that has not been released to the public, sent out only to my patrons. So join my Patreon at Masha Slamovich and follow me on Instagram and Twitter, also at Masha Slamovich. And all the links will be in the video description down below. And in the meanwhile, thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a like if you had a good time. Subscribe and the notification bell to never miss an upload. And until next time, goodbye.